In this video, I'll be introducing the prime number theorem. What the prime number theorem relates to is what's known as the prime counting function, and it does exactly what you thought it might do. It counts primes. Okay, so we call it pi of x. And what it is, is it's going to be the order of the set of p such that p is prime and p is less than or equal to x. Okay, it's that simple. It just counts the number of primes below a certain number x. And this is also going to be equivalent to the sum for all p less than or equal to x. This is primes p as I used in the previous fun uh, video. For all primes less than or equal to x of 1. Right? So all of the primes less than or equal to x, you add 1, and that'll just count primes more intuitively. And so now what we do, I'll go ahead and list out a few values. Pi of 2 is going to be 1. Pi of 3 is going to be 2. Pi of 4 is going to be 2. Pi of 5 is going to be 3. Pi of 6 is going to be 3. Pi of 7 is going to be 4. Okay? And so if you imagine graphing this out, right? 1 is 0. 2 goes up to 1. 3 goes up to 2, so that's sort of linear. 4 sort of slows it down, so it goes up sort of linearly, but it slows down. Okay? So it's just dragging behind a linear function is really what we're observing here. So how do I use this to my advantage? What other function can I use to model this? Okay, what other function closely relates to this? And as it turns out, it's the function x over natural log of x. You're like, that, that doesn't really make much sense because at 1, there's an asymptote, right? That doesn't seem like it relates at all. Well, no, we'll continue it as you get to very large values, okay? It sort of stagnate, stagnates at a certain point, but then it starts going up again. And it starts catching up with this prime counting function. And as it turns out, the ratios between these two numbers gets very, very slim. This space between them, although it never gets close to zero, the limit of their differences is not zero. It's just that the numbers get so large so quickly and they're close enough that if you actually look at the ratios, you can see that they grow at a very similar rate as you look at it as it goes past infinity. And that's what this theorem says. It says that the limit as x goes to infinity of pi of x over x natural log of x is equal to 1. Meaning that asymptotically, as you go way out here, they grow at a very similar rate. That's what this is saying. It's not saying that they get close to each other, because they don't really get that close to each other. And as we'll find out, this is in fact equivalent to analyzing a much easier function to analyze, and that function was psi of x from last time, okay? The function psi of x, the Chebyshev function, Chebyshev, whatever, <laughs> and it's, uh, which was the sum for all n less than or equal to x of lambda of n. It's equivalent to analyzing this and showing that it's roughly linear as you get asymptotic. Okay, so the limit as x approaches infinity of psi of x over x is equal to 1. This is an equivalent statement, as we'll prove, and it might not seem very obvious, but it, it's sort of, because this function is sort of like multiplying pi of x by natural log of x, right? Because if I were to multiply this by natural log of x, then I would get the sum for all primes less than or equal to x natural log of x, which is a pretty much a very similar function, right? Pretty much the same function, but it's not exactly this. But it's very closely related to this, 
And so if you imagine multiplying the top and bottom by natural log of x, you get this same sort of relation. So that's the idea behind the prime number theorem. And in the next videos, we'll be introducing a lot of more functions, a lot of more ideas, and we will be proving this theorem. And it actually takes a lot, and it takes a lot of that buildup that we've had before, analyzing the zeta function, the gamma function, and the Chebyshev function. And that's it.